In digital spaces, we're still having this continued discussion about the lack of traditional vocalists or big voice singers in mainstream music. But when you look beyond that, I think people are asking, can these types of singers still succeed in music? And the answer is yes. While big singing is no longer the standard in mainstream music, there are still markets where this kind of vocalism is still appreciated. And the most obvious answer for many of these artists will be returning back to gospel. Remember years ago, when the girls started flopping on the pop and R&B charts, they were run and cut a gospel record. Well, gospel is and will always be a place where singing is the standard. But the other obvious answer will be musical theater. You know the music Up until the 90s or so, it wasn't uncommon for R&B and gospel singers to do Broadway. I think a great idea today would be to revive Pearly for a number of reasons. It's an all-black cast. It was also the first to market specifically to black people, bringing them into the world and making them fans of musical theater. originated by Melba Moore, was the first role to include really high belts above the staff. <laughs> Melba Moore's style of a high octave belting is now the standard of Broadway. So when you think of some of the high belting girls of today, such as Jennifer Hudson or Amber Riley, Why not put this show on them? Because this kind of music was written for these kind of voices. From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe. Jazz or blues is another great avenue for these kinds of vocalists because vocalizing and emotional delivery is still the standard. Example, while many know her for her R&B material, Lettucey has found a renewed success in exploring her jazz interest with her recent Lettucey Sings Nina Simone project. The results have been amazing. She's singing in larger venues with full orchestras. She has her own TV special and she's received countless awards for the work. What Lettucey has done with this project is a great example of finding the people and the spaces that can appreciate your gift. But in any event that you don't want to do any of those genres, the other obvious answer will be to slide into the house and dance music genre. Many gospel trained singers who did not go into R&B made themselves household names in the world of house music. Stars such as a diva. And it should be noted that gospel singers have a long history of doing very well in house and dance music. In 
the 80s, singers such as Tremaine Hawkins, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, the Clark Sisters, and Vicky Winans all had success on the dance and club charts. And not to mention, Ricky Dillard would even have a top five house hit when he combined his talents with a diva and Frankie Knuckles on the track Walking. These gospel artists' success on the dance charts would open up doors to more lucrative opportunities for them, but obviously they declined it to adhere to their religious beliefs. But it should be noted that once you're in that world of house and dance music, you don't really have to ever worry about not working again. There are always house and dance music festivals and parties worldwide. Which leads me to my final point. Leave the United States. What many artists and listeners alike fail to realize is that the United States is not the only lucrative music market. Many soul and R&B singers, once they aren't major sellers in the United States anymore, they are able to find work consistently in Europe. For example, Dionne Warwick plays smaller supper clubs in the United States, but on her recent European tour, she can still sell out a major theater. I had no idea that you were such a huge star in Europe. Yeah, no one in America knows that. I mean, people are always shocked when I yeah. explain. People say, when are you going to go to Vegas? <laughs> I was there already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not that I'm saying I wouldn't play Las Vegas, but I'm I'm drawing such a crowd now that well, um, Wembley Stadium two nights in a row and you, I don't know, but people ninety thousand people each time. Tina Turner once said, "Why would I play a theater in the United States when I can sell out stadiums in Europe?" And this serves to the point that European audiences generally pay a lot better than United States audiences. Tony Braxton once mentioned in an interview that if she does one or two corporate European gigs, she really doesn't have to work the rest of the year. The same reigns true with the Asian music markets. That is a market where there is still an appreciation for this kind of singing and talent, and they pay good money for it. It's common knowledge that the records aren't really selling like they used to, and they aren't bringing in the money that they used to. So if having success in music means chart success, awards, and accolades, then the current music market is not the place for big vocalists. But if success is working, then there are still many avenues for big vocalists and music today. Thanks for watching.